Trevor Ryan? No, I'm sorry, Trevor Jones. I'm sorry, I've been having problems with names all night, so I apologize. Trevor Jones, again, as I introduced him before, South Dakota law enforcement official who is on his own personal time. cancer, glaucoma, and of course our own South Dakota Medical Association. You see their opinions on medical marijuana. For them, on each of those societies, they say smoking marijuana is not a viable treatment for any of those diseases. So that's where I lean to, and that's where I look for regarding the medical side of medical marijuana. So I won't talk a lot about that because I don't know a lot about it. I, I would throw that to the experts. Usually we have a doctor here tonight. Uh, he couldn't make it. So if you have any medical questions, you'll see me fumble a lot because, like I said, I don't know much about that side of it other than what I read from those societies that are represented there. As I said, we're going to talk about Montana and their experiences with medical marijuana. Why Montana? They're very similar to South Dakota, similar in population, similar in ec economy, agriculture, tourism drives Montana as well. And uh, believe it or not, their initiative language is very similar to ours. The one proposed that you'll see on the ballot, of course on Tuesday, is very similar to the one Montana passed in 2005. Now there are some differences, but the main gist of the, the main language of the two are very similar. You can see here, uh, they have the, your card holders, the South Dakota side, here's Montana over here. You see some of the uh, qualifying medical conditions that come in South Dakota, cancer, glaucoma, you see that over on this side as well. You're also going to talk about uh, uh, intractable pain. They call it chronic pain. Intractable pain on our South Dakota initiative. Intractable, all that means is it's hard to get rid of it. And that's, if you look at the definition, it's just hard to get rid of pain. Now, it does say here six months, okay? Reasonable medical efforts within at least six months. That's different than Montana. There's a difference there. But if uh, anything is the devil's in details, what is six months? I have had this pain for six months in my leg. I visit the doctor whom I qualify as a card holder based on the way the initiative reads. Another thing you want to look at here, you can't see very well, but it's right in section four. It talks about reasonable compensation. A caregiver may receive reasonable compensation in Montana. That's the exact language you're going to see in the South Dakota initiative. Sometimes you might hear this say a caregiver can't make any profit. Well, you go to Montana, in a one county alone, one county in Montana, there are 700 caregivers. Now, if it weren't profitable, there wouldn't be 700 caregivers in one county. So, 
when we talk about reasonable compensation, which we'll get to in just a little bit on how you can make money from selling marijuana if you're a caregiver or a cardboard. And that's obviously one of our concerns as law enforcement. Many of you, and in, 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 uh, Mr. Ryan said this as well, talks about what the medical marijuana is for. And I really wish that it was truly about the debilitating patient or the person that was terminally ill, because those folks deserve our compassion. Okay, but as you can see here in Montana, right now we have roughly 20,000 cardholders, medical marijuana cardholders. And what's that mean? Well, that means they went and visited a doctor, the doctor's providing them a certificate. A certificate in Montana, they went to Montana Department of Health, and boom, they got the medical marijuana card. So they can possess one ounce of marijuana, four and or six marijuana plants. Okay, so we're just talking about Montana, but this is the comparison. Again, we're, we're very similar to them, so you can see the things that happen in Montana are more likely to happen here. Why? If I was going to build a car plant here in South Dakota, the first, first, first thing I do is I go to other states and see what that car plant did to that area or out in that area, what kind of money I made, et cetera. So you always want to compare other states. My, my day job, that's kind of what I do. If I want to try something in South Dakota, the first thing somebody's going to ask me, well, how's it work in Florida? How's it work in Hawaii? How's it work in Maine? So I'll research those other states. So it's not off the grid for me to like, okay, if we're going to pass a medical marijuana card uh, initiative here in South Dakota, let's go find out what happened in other states. Why did I pick Montana? I think I spoke to that already. Again, if it's about truly terminal ill patients and cancer patients and those patients that are seriously ill and on their deathbed, in Montana, you can see that's not the case. 91% of their card holders, of the 20,000 card holders, get their medical marijuana card for pain. Now, if we're truly about that, we have a smaller number, obviously, than 20,000 in Montana. Okay, so to say it's about the truly terminal ill patient or cancer individual, uh, that's not the case in Montana. And initially, that's how it was touted in 2005, doesn't mean strictly for the terminally ill, the bedridden, et cetera. Well, clearly, as you can see here, 91% of those 20,000 20, cardholders get their uh, card for pain. What's pain? It's hard to find. You ask any doctor, he'll tell you it's hard to diagnose pain. Very, very hard to diagnose pain. <laughs> this is an old slide you can see here, so this number's off. But again, a friend of mine who works in law enforcement in Montana provided these. The number's up to 20,000 now, as you can see. Um, the jump here, look at how many card holders we had here, and also the big jump, and the big jump again. Well, I would argue, like, do you think that between 2008, 2010, all these people acquired cancer, multiple sclerosis? Of course not. They figured out that there's a scam out there, this initiative could be abused, <coughs> and that I could go and fake my pain and get my medical marijuana card. Here it is again here. You're gonna hear a couple terms, and Mr. Ryan said it as well patients or your card holders, your caregivers are the persons that grow the marijuana, and of course the doctors, which so explained over here. Look at the big jump here. June 2008, boom, the number just kept going up. Again, I contend that a lot of people get more sick, a lot more people diagnosed with cancer, a lot more people diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Of course not. Again, they figured out that you could go in and make, and make up some sort of story about pain, and boom, you got yourself a card. Again, if you're about the terminally ill, the person that was on, on their deathbed and truly sick, why is the average cardholder in Montana 41 years old? I mean, true, there, there are definitely people out there that suffer from cancer and debilitating diseases, diseases that are this age, but the average of the 20,000 cardholders in Montana? I don't think so. And remember the initiative just like ours, even though ours says intractable pain, there's this chronic pain. Here, I point out this is why it's a public safety issue. This breaks down those card holders by age range, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 50, and so on and so forth. Right here from 20 on or 21 onward, who are these people? These are people that are not gonna be on their deathbed. These are people that are not gonna be uh, in the hospital. What these people are, all these people represent are your drivers on the road. Those are the people driving in your car. Those are the people that are working at your restaurant, at your business, et cetera, et cetera. These are not the people, if it was truly about the terminal ill and their cancer patients were in the hospital and they're immobile and they're on the last stages of life when that's where compassion truly comes out, right? We wouldn't have to worry about them being on the road. We wouldn't have to worry about them 
flying airplanes, driving school buses, right? But that's not the case here in Montana. Again, I go back to Montana. These are the people that are on their highways and byways. And if our initiative is similar to theirs, I would expect the same, This that these breakdowns would be very similar. Montana, as I said, their initiative, very similar to ours. This is theirs, six plants, one ounce of usable marijuana for each registered patient. Can I have a felony drug conviction? This is very troublesome um, because our initiative, if you read it, I know many of you have, is that the caregiver cannot have a felony drug conviction, if I remember correctly. Well, who's gonna check that? How do we determine that? Who's gonna do that? What's well, gonna, it's gonna rely on the state, okay? And I go back in a little bit, I'll talk about this later, is the state doesn't have a whole lot of money. So now we're gonna have to hire people to check to make sure these 20,000 card holders and roughly 5,000 caregivers, if the numbers match up to Montana, okay? Remember, same population, so it's not a huge leap. Well, who's gonna do all this? Well, another, now another state agency is gonna be burdened with something to pass on. And that information here, I don't know if it lays out that I can pass that information on to the Department of Health to let them know that the person has a felony drug conviction. Is the Department of Health, are they able to have criminal uh, justice information? Let's talk about said reasonable compensation there. You can make a lot of money by growing marijuana. And this is, a, as it says here, 60 plants. Well, in South Dakota, you aren't gonna be able to have 60 plants. As a caregiver, the most I'm ever gonna have, okay? I could care for five, five card holders. As a caregiver, I could care for five patients or card holders. And each one of those, I can have six plants, right? Five times six, I can have 30 plants as the caregiver in my house. Right, my primary residence, I can grow 30 plants, okay? Well, if you see right here, this guy's growing 60 plants. He has three stages grows, three crop rotations a year. This is so we can divide this in half. Okay, I can only do 60 plants. Guess what? I can make $200,000 in a year tax-free. So the incentive to grow the marijuana for someone else is big. Yeah, granted, I might be a caregiver, which I think is an insult to the nurses the doctors, the licensed practice nurses, and your hospice workers, they go to school for years, study for years, and they take care of the sick. In this initiative, the caregiver, he has to be 21 years old and know how to grow pot and not have a felony drug conviction. Now, as if I was a caregiver, and I'm not, I don't work in the healthcare field, that would insult me because I went to school for all those years, I care for people, and this guy gets called a caregiver because he knows how to grow a plant that's illegal to possess. Okay, go back to me. So there is an incentive to make money and sell your pot to somebody else. We've seen that just in recent case here in South Dakota, a carload of 100 pounds of pot that was in, grown in California, two individuals that were card holders from Oregon were transporting that pot across our state to deliver to individuals illegally in Wisconsin. So the incentive is there, it'll still be there. See, California, even though they clearly have their medical uh, marijuana um, uh, law since 1996, it still has there. If they can't control it, they've had their law for 14 years, what makes it sound like weakers? But what sense does it make that we're gonna be able to control it as well? 